Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. If you're a fan of the channel, then you know that a few weeks ago, I dropped a brand new carbide end mill out of my mill spindle and completely destroyed it after only one use. I've been thinking about that since then, trying to come up with a good way to prevent that from happening again. And a whole bunch of you have jumped in in the comments and provided a bunch of suggestions like putting a board on top of the workpiece underneath the spindle so that if the tool falls out, it won't chip or attaching a foot pedal to the spindle brake so I can activate the brake with my foot and have both hands free to operate the drawbar and to catch the tool, or 3D print something to hold the tool in the spindle so that I don't drop it. But you know me, so you know what I chose. I bought a power drawbar and we're gonna put that on the mill today. Oh, and for those of you who love the sponsorships, I got bad news for you. I paid for this one myself, so maybe next time. This is the power drawbar kit that I purchased, and I purchased this one from Precision Matthews. I, there are other ones that are out there, but they come with instructions for how to adapt them to your mill, and I think the drawbar is already adapted to the PM935 TV mill that I have, and that's why I opted to buy this one. I guess we'll find out when I install it. So it comes with the air motor, and this is spring-loaded and has the spline drive in the bottom to engage the drawbar and then it's got 3 8 inch outside diameter push to connect air fittings on top. So this is an air driven motor. It comes with a set of push buttons for in and out. And again, this is all pneumatic air in and two outlets to go to the motor. And it comes with the air filter, pressure regulator and lubricator unit to go in line so that you're providing lubricated air to the switches and the motor. It comes with a replacement drawbar, so this drawbar should fit the mill directly. The main difference is that it has a splined top that is designed to engage the spline drive in the bottom of the motor. And the manual comes with instructions for how to modify this spacer to fit your mill and how to determine the correct length. And it gives a dimension for the shoulder and how that has to fit in the top of the mill. Like I said, I think this one has already been specifically set up for this mill, so I don't think we're gonna have to do that. And then it comes with a bunch of other stuff. Comes with a coil of the tubing, comes with some grease, a bunch of hardware, a muffler for the air outlet on the air motor, some air tool oil, and some miscellaneous zip ties. Now the way this mounts on the mill, there is a three screw pattern in the top of the bearing retainer on the top of the mill that this is gonna fit in. And because of the way the screws are oriented, I wouldn't be able to mount it with the front of the motor forward, so I do want to rotate this base plate. It's just held on with these four screws, so it should be really easy to rotate. Here on the top of the mill, we're going to start by pulling out the original drawbar and replacing it with the drawbar that came in the power drawbar kit. Now it should just drop right in, but before I do anything else here, I want to check the length. Now the manual says that this shoulder needs to be recessed into the top of the mill by about 50 thousandths. So I'm just going to zero my calipers on a one, two, three block in incremental mode, and then use the tail rod to check the depth. So zeroing it out should cancel the thickness of the block, and it looks like we're about 21 and a half thou. Now the manual says this should be about 50 thou. I think this is probably gonna be okay. I think in the long run, rather than modify the drawbar, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and make a 30 thou shim. Next time I place an order with send, cut, send, I'll just go ahead and order a stainless shim, have it cut out, and I'll just put it underneath the motor to get that extra space. Start by greasing the threads here, drop it in, and then grease the shoulder where this sits on the top of the spindle. This is where most of the friction is going to occur when tightening the drawbar down. We'll give that a little spin to distribute the grease and then put some grease on the splines where the motor's going to engage. And kind of use the packet here to spread this in so it doesn't all just push off the splines the first time the motor activates. And it looks like it is time for some more paper towels. 
Now the motor mounts using the existing threaded holes. The kit comes with some longer screws, so I'll just go ahead and pull these out, set the motor on top, and mount it with the longer screws. There is just a little bit of play in the screws, so I'm just centering it up, trying to make sure that it is exactly centered on the bearing retainer here. And then we should be able to just tighten these down. I don't think the precision of the alignment is really that important, but I can feel it flush all the way around, so I know it's pretty close. What I don't understand is how I managed to get grease on the sides of it. The push button switches, or rather valves, come on a little subplate that you can rotate 90 degrees depending on how you need to mount it on your particular mill. And then it just has a couple of tabs that mount with the existing threaded holes for the downfeed gearbox lever. Now I'm just taking these screws out and I just dropped that one. I'm pretty sure it's gone forever, which is fine because we're going to use the longer ones that came with the kit. These screws just go in, they come with uh, washers, everything you need is in the kit, and they just screw right in. Zero dramas. Now you can see that my mill has the power switch for the spindle directly above this plate. If your mill doesn't have it in that location, you can rotate the little subplate on the switches and you can mount them above the shifter. And that's probably a little nicer because then it doesn't stick out the front and interfere with anything. You can still get at the shifter lever, so this looks good. I decided to mount the filter and lubricator assembly here on the side of the RAM. I've got it just enough below the top so that if I ever want to put a bracket up there to hold some kind of a backsplash, I can. And it's also, since it's attached to the RAM, it'll move with the RAM and I don't have to worry about the length of the tube between the filter and the switch valves. So I'll just drill this out, being very careful not to break off my drill bit in the hole. I have done this several times. You've seen me install DROs on a few machines, including this mill, and uh, I have installed a tap or two permanently into a machine in my day. Now there is lots of meat in the cast iron here, so I can go pretty deep, and that will then allow me to use a plug tap without having to go back and bottom. Now I am using an extra long tap wrench. I find that this allows me to have a little bit of you know normal hand movement trying to turn the thing, and it offers a little bit of flexibility. It makes it a little bit harder for me to snap off the tap. I find with a shorter tap wrench, it's a lot easier for me to install the end of the tap permanently in the mill. Now I've just drilled and tapped the top hole, and then I will use that to mount the filter assembly and then we'll come back and level it up and figure out where the bottom hole needs to be. I find this a lot easier than trying to figure out and put in both holes at the same time. At least I have a higher success rate doing it this way. So we'll just repeat, drill the hole, tap it, and mount it. Now this filter assembly actually came with 824 hardware which I thought was a little bit strange, so I went ahead and provided my own M4 screws just so that all the screws threaded into the mill will be metric. Now with all the parts mounted, we just have to hook up the air lines, and these are just push to connect fittings, so the tubing should just push right into the fittings to connect, like it says in the name. Now I'm just using a little razor blade tubing cutter. This one actually came from Automation Direct. I bought it when I was doing another project, but it's real handy to have one of these around for cutting this tubing. That's got just a little bit of slack, should be all right. And then we can make the connection to the air supply. Now this little manifold block on the back of the mill here should look familiar. I actually made that in a previous video. It's got an air regulator on it for the blow gun that I use here on the mill, and I just added a little elbow with a push to connect fitting to supply air to the power drawbar. I got enough slack in here that I should be able to slide the ram in and out. So there should be plenty of uh, slack for that. Now, I did not think though about tilting the head. So that tube is gonna have to be lengthened when I eventually figure out that I need to do that in order to make it work. So I'll go ahead and plumb up the motor here. We'll just run tubing from the, this will be the out switch to the out port on the motor. And just go ahead and route that in. I'll go ahead and route the rest and there's not enough tubing. However, 
I anticipated this turn of events, so I bought another roll of tubing. I'll just cut off and get a clean end here and go ahead and route the other circuit. Now you can see that the tubing I bought came in a roll while the tubing that came with the kit was folded up. So the curvature of the two tubes is not the same. So the tubing doesn't follow the same path down and that kind of bothers me. But fortunately I bought a great big roll of tubing that all has the same curvature. So I'll go ahead and just replace that line. And that makes me happy. The next thing we need to do is fill the oiler and get it primed. I'll start by removing the plug and just filling it up to just under the line. Then we'll put the plug back in and open the metering valve all the way up. The manual says to open it all the way up to number nine. Lower the spindle so that the drawbar can't engage. Turn on the air and just cycle it a few times. Now we're watching the oil in the sight glass dome there waiting for seven drops. And then once we have seven drops, we'll just turn it back down to setting number two. And that should be it. We should be ready to rock. Let's give it a try. I've got a drill chuck here, and I will just put it in the spindle, align the key, and hit the button. And it just pulls it right in. It is a little louder and a little more violent than I was expecting. Let's make sure we don't have any interference here. Make sure it's all the way at the top. Spin it up. I don't hear anything scraping or hitting. I think we're good. And taking it out is just as easy. Let's try with a TTS collet. This is the Tormach tool holding system, so it's got the shorter collet. Just spin that in, and that actually went a little bit too deep. I'm still getting a feel for these controls. Let's bring it out a little bit and seat this. That seems to work okay. Still nothing hitting. It is a little violent, so I'm going to turn the air pressure down a little bit. Maybe 80 PSI, maybe 70. That does seem to work a little better, but again, I got to call it all the way out. when I really just wanted to loosen it. It is going to take some time to get used to these controls. But it is possible to just loosen the tool, put in a new one. Yeah, I could get used to that. Now up on top, you can see that the motor is actually pulling down to engage on the splines and then popping back up so that it's not engaged when the mill is running. And this seems to be working pretty well. I can totally see why you would want to use the TTS tool system on a manual lathe with a power draw bar like this. Let's try it with an ordinary collet and an ordinary end mill. Just run that in enough to hold it. This is a half inch carbide end mill like the one I dropped. And that goes in quick and easy. Again, no interference. Seems to be working okay. Now it is going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of practice to get a feel for the controls, but I like it. Well, that's it. I actually expected that project to be a lot more involved than it was, I guess. That's what happens when you buy a kit that was actually designed for the machine you actually have. Go figure. And of course, right after I turned off the cameras, the air pressure regulator in my compressor that I fixed a few weeks ago started leaking again. So I'm gonna have to go deal with that. I'm not happy about that. If any of you have any suggestions on how to deal with that, or if you've had prior issues with a California Air Tools pressure regulator leaking, or if you got suggestions for a good replacement compressor that's relatively quiet and will run on a two horsepower circuit, throw that down in the comments and let me know. I might be in the market for a new one. This one's starting to frustrate me. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.